Hi, I'm Michael Nelson with Naturopathic Specialists. Today is April 13th, and it's a Monday. Happy Monday, Dr. Darling. Happy Monday, Michael. <laughs> it's sometimes hard to get out of bed, especially when you're losing track of the schedule like this. But I wanted to ask you a question today about a question or a topic that seems to have a little bit of confusion around it still, and that's masks. What's your research about masks showing what we should do or shouldn't do or what the confusion is? Yeah, we thought it was important to just kind of give a few minutes synopsis on what's going on in terms of the mask recommendations. They change uh, very frequently because of what's going on around us and how much spread there's been in the community and especially you had to look at how much spread there's been in your area to really make an informed decision for yourself. But there's different recommendations. We've got the World Health Organization that's recommending you really don't need to wear a mask um, unless you yourself are showing symptoms, coughing, sneezing, et cetera, of the virus, or you're caring for someone who is known to have the virus. When we look at the recent recommendations that have come out from the CDC, the CDC is now saying that we should be wearing a mask in situations where we have to run errands and go to the grocery stores and the pharmacies and places where we can't guarantee that we'll be able to social distance ourselves at that recommended six foot um, circumference or radius that they've been talking about. So the CDC's recommendation is that when we are in out running errands, we do wear a face mask and they are really recommending that you wear a cloth face mask um, so that we're not taking away from the masks that we want to reserve at this moment, which are still in short supply for the first line responders and, and doctors and things like that. So they've got recommendations on their website of how you can make your own cloth face mask. And a lot of people out there are producing them. They've really come together to up the production levels of those face masks on an individual level. And we've got some patients who are doing the same and who have brought in cloth masks for us, which we really appreciate that. The other recommendation, we have to look at the state of Arizona and Dr. Christ, who is the um, services director for Arizona in terms of the Department of Health is telling us that we, she's giving the same recommendation as the, the CDC essentially and saying that we should be covering our masks when we're going out in public. And she goes a little bit further in her statement um, than you can just read on the lot, on, online for the recommendations of the World Health Organization and the CDC. And she says, really what we're looking at when we wear a mask is that we can be asymptomatic for a period of days and shedding virus before we know ourselves that we are carrying the virus. So when we wear a mask, we're blocking our droplets when we speak, when we sneeze, when we cough. We're blocking those droplets with our own masks so that we're not, pro we're not projecting those onto other people around us and potentially affecting them. So I think there's a lot of confusion around the fact that, oh, I have a mask, I'm safe, it's protecting me. Maybe I don't need to wash my hands as often, or maybe I don't need to use the 70% alcohol sanitizer as often, or maybe I don't need to stay quite as far away from people when I'm out in public because I've got this mask. And what they're saying now, and again, we know only what we know, this is so brand new, but they're saying that mask is not protecting me. When I'm wearing that mask, that mask is protecting you. Obviously, we're not in the same room, and I don't have a mask on this morning yet, but as soon as we're finished filming and I'm around any patients in the clinic and even my coworkers, we are wearing masks on a daily basis, and I'll show you how to put that on and how to take it off, which is another important part. But just remember that mask on you is protecting those around you because you may not even know that you're carrying the virus. But in terms of keeping you from getting sick, maybe not quite as much as you think. And the other issue too is when they tell you you need to be washing your hands and how effective that is and you don't touch your face before you wash your hands, especially your mouth, your nose, and your eyes. When you wear a general mask out in the populace, you're still contacting those respiratory droplets with your eyes potentially. And not that many people are talking about that. It may not be as effective as a route for the virus to make you sick, but it can still make contact with those eyes even when you're walking through a grocery store. So please don't think that a mask is the way to protect yourself from this more than the hand washing itself and the social distancing. Those are our, our top priorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important to maintain good habits. And sometimes those habits are hard to learn. But I think by now we're getting a little bit of our heads in the game of just trying to, as they say, flattening the curve, slowing this down as much as possible. So like you said, um, 
the masks, there's a proper way to put them on and there's a proper, maybe a lifespan if you have a cloth mask. Can you talk a little bit about that? If you have a cloth mask, you should be washing it every day. And if, you're, if your um, mask gets damp in any way, that's also stopping its ability to stop those particles from coming in and out. And the mask shouldn't be worn more than once, even though we're telling people right now that they need to wear the masks more than they probably should because of shortages. Really, the purpose of this is to be worn once and then disposed of, and disposed of in a closed container so that it doesn't continue to shed viral particles because they will get trapped in here and they can be a source of contamination. And that's why you hear if they're not handled properly, you can continue to contaminate yourself and potentially cause more danger. So when you're using one of these masks or a cloth mask that would look similar, you put it around one of your ears. First of all, let me back up. Make sure that your hands are completely sanitized. You should have washed them for at least 20 seconds with soap and water or used a 70% alcohol sanitizer and still scrub them for 20 seconds and make sure they completely dry to allow the alcohol to kill the virus. You start by fashioning one side around one ear. You bring it across onto the other ear, that part self-explanatory. There's a wire up here that you bend to conform to the shape of your nose. And I'm touching this mask, so I'm making sure my hands are clean and I'm not contaminating myself. This part itself, it needs to come down below your chin. So if it's up here, this is not helping. If your mask is pulled down below your chin, but now you're annoyed with this thing constricting your face and you wear it like this, which I've seen a lot of people doing, this isn't helping you either. So really it needs to be up above your nose, that wire firmly pressed down, as much of the mask touching your face and flush with your face so there's not gas as possible. And this is the way you wear your mask. Now, while you're wearing it, you have to remember not to touch it because you're contaminating it again. When you finish wearing it, you wanna make sure your hands are clean once again. Take it off your face, move it away from your face and not near it and dispose of it in a plastic bag. And again, your hand washing routine, either with soap and water or a hand sanitizer. And that's the proper way for you to wear a mask. I have to admit that my homemade mask um, which is just made out of a pair of my wife's tights that she wasn't using. <laughs> so I just put it all the way over. Um, it doesn't fit exactly right. So I have to avoid pinching it and readjusting it. And then right. it's just that mindset game. But the recommendation still stands, at least for us locally in Arizona. Dr. Chris, the Arizona Department of Health Services, all of that say, if you're out and you can't guarantee that social distancing, what do we still have to do? wear a mask, All protect right. those around you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Darling. Um, if you've enjoyed watching this out there, uh, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, and we'll be doing more of these again. So thank you again, Dr. Darling. Stay safe. Thanks, Michael. Have a great day.